my lesson today um, has to do with the Apostle Paul and a technique he used in teaching. And of course, his objective not only was to deal with the recipients of his letters when he was alive, but um, he probably had a, a pretty good understanding of the fact that they were going to last for some period of time. Um, it's doubtful that, that he would have thought it was going to be 2,000 years, but so be it. The Apostle Paul wrote different kinds of letters, and we know that some were very personal. When he wrote to Timothy, Titus, Philemon, these were personal one-to-one uh, -one letters, but most of Paul's letters were actually to groups of people, to a class or an ecclesia, we would say. And we know that Paul was a, uh, an outstanding teacher, and uh, his letters all had a purpose. And uh, I believe that good teachers have methods, and, and they have a pretty focused goal. So um, I want to look at uh, five letters today that Paul wrote. And the reason we're looking at five is they have this similar concept that Paul uses. And he uses basically a three-step process where step number one, he discusses the problem. Step number two, he brings up some teachings or, if you will, doctrines. And then as step number three, he tells them what to do. And the five letters that I want to look at briefly within the time period are 1 Thessalonians, Galatians, Ephesians, Romans, and Hebrews. Let's start with Galatians. Uh, this letter divides nicely into three sections. Uh, the first section talks about problems. The second session talks, section talks about Christian teachings that Paul wants them to remember and to understand. And the third section, as we said, talks about what they are to do. This third section tells them how they are to live as Christians, how they are to become better followers of Jesus. And I, I like the last closing phrase of today's man, the comment where it says, the purpose is for continued growth into the likeness of Christ. That could be said to be the goal of all of Paul's writings. So this letter um, into the Galatians, to the Galatians, uh, fits those three steps, problems, teachings, and what they are to do. And you, we will see that in some of the letters, he combines one and two a little bit, but he always ends up with number three section, what they are to do. So in the letter to the Galatians, chapters one and two talk about the problem. The problem was that after Paul had spent time with them and taught them the idea of Jesus' sacrifice and the idea that Jesus' sacrifice provided the only possible solution, and that was all a gift, it was a matter of grace and not by works, after Paul's hard work on all those things, some Jewish teachers came into Galatia and started to teach them otherwise. They started to contradict. They started to destroy everything Paul had done. And we see how upset Paul is in Galatians, the first chapter, verses 6. And then uh, in Galatians, the third chapter, chapter 1, he almost loses it. And he says, oh, you foolish Galatians. And some translations say, oh, you idiots. You know, the rough words. Paul was upset. Then in the second section, which would be those middle chapters of, for sure, three and four, but some of two, maybe starting in the second chapter, uh, verse 16, uh, he, he brings up doctrines, we would call them. And he says things like, in the 16th verse, a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith. And uh, in the 21st verse, he says, if righteousness, this is the last verse of chapter two, if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for nothing. What a, what a strong statement. It, it's upsetting. In the third chapter, uh, he, he asks them the question, did you receive the Spirit by works of the law 
or did you get the Holy Spirit by hearing with faith? Obvious answer. In verse 6 of that chapter, another teaching is Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. So these are the teachings that would correct the errors that the Galatians were being exposed to. In these middle two chapters, uh, three and four, uh, after reviewing, the, the, there are something close to 50 different statements of doctrine in those two chapters. Paul goes into section three, what are they to do? So starting in Galatians, actually, uh, I see it starting in the fifth chapter in verse 19, he starts to list behaviors. And some are not to be in the Christian life, and some are to be in the Christian life. So the undesirable behaviors that he mentions, forbidding them of selfishness, bad temper, being competitive, and then some of the behaviors that he is promoting, he says, you need to have forgiveness, you need to share burdens, affection for others. Now, when I read this third section, which is basically chapters five and six, there are almost 25 different behaviors that Paul enumerates, mentions, some good, some bad. 25 items there, behavioral items. So let's review that. First, he talks about the problem, which is Jews trying to destroy Paul's preaching and the gospel of grace. Second, he brings up relevant teachings. For example, Abraham had the relationship with God because of his faith, not his works. Then he goes to section three, 25 items like patience, love. Much of it could be summed up under a, uh, an umbrella, uh, calling it love. So keep that structure in, in mind, please, of one, two, and three. And now let's go look at Romans. The problems with the Romans was very similar to the Galatians, because it was, again, the same issue of the Jews wanting to follow the law. And it was a problem. Uh, they were thinking, again, that righteousness could be attained by doing physical things. So Paul uses the same approach. After discussing the teachings, uh, he, he brings up a number of doctrines. He says, uh, I have come to the conclusion and this is in the second chapter, verses 28 and 29. He says, I've come to the conclusion that a true Jew is not a man who is merely a Jew outwardly. And I've come to the conclusion that real circumcision is not just a matter of the body. A true Jew is one who belongs to God in heart, in feeling. Uh, Paul takes... Uh, chapters in Romans now, 1 through 11, to discuss the problems and the doctrines. 11 chapters. Then when he gets to chapter 12, he starts section 3. What are you to do? So in verse 1 of chapter 12, he says, therefore, that means because of all the problems and the teachings, we have come to a conclusion and in the next two chapters, 12 and 13, the last two chapters of the letter, he tells them what to do. And in verse 2 of chapter 12, the big word he uses is transform. Transform yourself. That means change yourself. That's the same thing he said to the Galatians when he said to them in chapter 6, make yourself a new creature. What are you to do? Okay, so starting in chapter 12 and going to the end of the letter, he lists behaviors necessary to be a true Christian. For example, humility, empathy. You have to love. He says you have to pray. You have to have patience. At the end of this letter, in these two chapters, Paul lists something like 20 to 25 different behaviors Christian behaviors, and that's how he ends the letter. It's the same technique. First problems, then teachings, and then ends with what to do with your life. 
Let's look at 1 Thessalonians and see if we can find the three sections. Do the Thessalonians have a problem? Yes, they had a couple problems. First problem was quite different. They were being persecuted for being Christians. 1 Thessalonians, first chapter, verse 6. And the second problem is discussed in chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. It had to do with the second presence and the resurrection. They thought that only those who were living when Jesus returned would have part in the kingdom. And the ones that previously died would be left out. This was a big mistake. And Paul's next section goes into teachings for each one of the things. For the first problem of the persecutions that they were suffering, he basically tells them it's a necessary step. And he says, you were examples, the way you, you responded to that so well. You were an example to all believers. He says that in 1 Thessalonians 1, 7. And that's a teaching that will always be true. They were examples. That's a good doctrine. And the next teachings were on, on the resurrection problem. This is then in the fourth chapter, verse 16. To summarize it, he says, the dead in Christ shall arise first. So he explains more, but we won't have time for that at this moment. So then he moves to what we are calling section three how they are to live. And in the fourth chapter of First Thessalonians, he says, to sum up, my brothers, we beg that you continue to learn more and more of the life that pleases God. Isn't that a beautiful statement? That you learn more and more of the life that pleases God. That, that's quite a thought. And so from that verse to the end of the letter, again, this is what I'm calling section three, he lists how we are to live and change our lives. Paul using the same method again. And here are some of the things that he says in these last uh, parts of First Thessalonians. Comfort and console each other. He says eldership needs to be respected. Evil appearances must be avoided. He says, be thankful. Quench not the spirit. Again, he says, pray. And he says, prove all things. In that section, he lists at least 15 required behaviors in this letter. The next letter is titled to the Ephesians. And again, Paul discusses the teachings and the chapters. It, it, I'm sorry discusses the problems and the teachings, okay? And that's, he takes three chapters, chapters one, two, and three. Then he says, amen. It's like, okay, so be it. And he goes chapter four, five, six, and he discusses what they are to do. And in those three chapters, four, five, and six, Paul comes up with over 30 descriptive terms as to what it takes to be a Christian, over 30. Uh, things like be humble, be patient, again, be forgiving. So Ephesians, same method, problems, teachings, and then what you're to do. The letter to the Hebrews, what were their problems? Well, they really had misunderstandings in at least three areas. They didn't understand the concept of the angels very well at all. They didn't understand the priesthood and who was the high priest, and they didn't understand what the new temple was. So Paul discusses those problems and the teachings, and he takes 11 chapters, the first 11 chapters, that's basically what he talks about. Then when he comes, chapters 12 and 13, guess what he does? Okay, same thing. Now, at the end of the letter, he tells them what to do. And some of the phrases uh, that are highlights of this, these two chapters are study Jesus. He says, be a good witness. 
pray, be thankful. He lists at least 15 required Christian behaviors in that section. So those are the books. Um, those are the chapters. Now, my study today is, is a work in process. Uh, I presented this at the German General Convention, and I highlighted these five books, Galatians, Ephesians, 1 Thessalonians, Romans, and Hebrews. And I can't remember if it was just before or just after, but Brother Hubert Lipka gave a discourse and he quoted something from Colossians. And when I heard that quote, I thought, oh my gosh, Colossians fits, it fits in this same concept. And uh, I felt that my, my research, my presentation was lacking that. Then Brother uh, Oleash from Poland was also on the program and he got up there a, an hour later and he said, I don't understand why Brother Krupa left out Philippians. So he went on to talk about Philippians. So believe me, this is, this is not complete. Uh, it's, a, it's a concept that I'm hoping uh, makes it easier to remember some of our responsibilities. So Galatians, it was chapters five and six. Ephesians, it was chapters four, five, and six. First Thessalonians was chapters four and five. And Romans, and Hebrews were both chapters 12 and 13. I firmly believe that those 11 chapters will change your life. That's what they're intended to do, to change your life. And that's what we need. But let me pause for a moment. If we add up all these things that Paul has listed in these 11 chapters, do you know that there's over 100, 100 items? Now, first of all, we will admit that there's redundancy. The love is mentioned. And you know, to quote, what, again, what Brother Tom quoted from Peter in our first discourse, uh, Peter said, this can all be summed up in love. I firmly believe that. But to have more than 100 items, that's not going to work. Uh, we're not going to be able to remember that. I'm not suggesting you even try to remember that. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that you have some focus on these 11 chapters. I think these 11 chapters are more important than historical problems that they had 2,000 years ago, even though we can learn from them, no question. And the discussion of the doctrines in the middle of each of these letters is important. Yes, no question. But these are the chapters that are going to change your life. And so my suggestion is that you, that we focus on these chapters a lot. And we get them into our brain. And, and then let the Holy Spirit take over. And when you come up with a situation that's going to require either patience or prayer or love, be it agape or filio, leave it to the Holy Spirit to pull the right thing out of your memory. I'm actually recommending that you don't overthink this list. Just know where they are, review them, and recognize that Paul was a great teacher and that he always ends his letters with what he wants us to remember. And in summary, he said in his last letter to the in his letter to the Galatians in the last chapter, verse 6, uh, 15. So this is Galatians 6, 15. Um, and this is from the Living Bible. He says, what counts is whether we really have been changed into new and different people. 
let me repeat it. What counts is whether we really have been changed into new and different people. So I hope this review of these five books, and I think there are more that fit the scheme, shows how Paul's mind worked. He would deal with the problem, he would base it on doctrines and teachings, and then fine, finally, he tells us what to do. May the Lord add his blessing.